Copy chat day 29, I believe. I can't really check because the the power in my house is out right now. So I had to run out and get myself a coffee from a local shop. So, you know, we're like we're making it work, but it's a little bit more inconvenient. Uh, but yeah, so sit down, grab yourself a coffee, enjoy the vibe. So yeah, power's been out. Uh, it ran out literally right as I was finished in the shower, which couldn't have been more perfect timing. Because I was just standing there, like, after I'd already done everything I need to do in the shower. And I was just standing under the water, and then it just cut off, and I was like, alright, yeah, I suppose that's my time to get out then. So yeah, like, it, it was like literally perfect timing. But that does mean, however, that today's videos, well, yesterday's video for you, are going to be coming out a little bit later than I would have wished. I mean, I, I'm i probably not going to be uploading them as early as I did two days ago for me. Wait, wait no, yesterday for me, so two days ago for you. I, the dates are really confusing but like I uploaded really early one day very recently uh, it's probably not gonna be like that just because like you know it it's hmm how do I even describe it like it just doesn't feel right to have them uploaded that early like usually I like uploading the videos after I've already recorded the coffee chat that's going to be coming out the next day. Because then it's like, alright, I can keep track of it. I know I have another video in the, like, queue to be uploaded. But when it's, like, uploaded before I've recorded the coffee chat, it's like, it just feels wrong, really. Like, it just feels incorrect. Also, while I was going up to get coffee, I got myself some cookies. Isn't that awesome? I have cookies now. A cookie and a coffee go really well together, I will say that. I mean, honestly, like, pretty much anything in a coffee goes well together. It's coffee. Like, you can, you never can go wrong with a coffee. Did my uh, five Bible chapters, well not five Bible chapters, but you know, I read my Bible too. Uh, for those that don't know, I don't just do like the reading of the Genesis chapters on YouTube, but I also do my own like independent Bible reading where I read through like five chapters, or at least I try to. And... The past few books that I've been reading, they've mainly been like the letters from Paul. So I've been able to get through them real quick. And it's like if the letter only has like one or two chapters, I just go on to the next one after and read through that too. But, you know, like sometimes the chapters don't really align with that. And it's like, I like starting off a book and then getting all the five chapters in in that way so that way I can like more easily keep track because it like five is just an easy number to remember I know like uh, I don't know if any of that made sense but hopefully it did to someone it's like if I'm reading through the letter to Timothy well you know like it only has I think it's the second letter that only has like two chapters in it and then I'll just go straight into the letter of Titus and I'll read through that and like you get me like it's if it's easy for me to knock out a few like books of the Bible 
I will knock out a few books of the Bible. But yeah, I usually try to stick to like reading five chapters, no more, no less. I mean, sometimes I'll read more, like obviously, if, if just throughout my day, I'll just pick it up and just read and just like, you know, try and understand more of God's word, essentially. Like I've been trying to do that a lot more just because I've really been like wanting to develop that sort of closer connection to God. Trying out something new with the hair today. I know it probably doesn't look that different to, like, how it normally does when I tie it up like this. But, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Like, the original look was to, like, have that sort of going behind like that. But it just sort of fell out. And, like, honestly, I like it more. And I like keeping this side kind of pulled back. Even though, like... That's where the hairline gets bad. It's like, you know, it, it. I think it looks nice. Like, hopefully, people think it looks nice. There's been like a weird pain in my right hip. Not sure where. Well, I know where it came from, but I'm not sure why. I was doing chest flies yesterday, and when I was, like, taking the steps forward, like, I was doing them on the cable, right? So when I was taking the steps forward to, like, you know, get, like, that good stretch on my chest, I just, like, felt this pain in my hip, and I wasn't sure, like, why I was feeling it. I still did the sets, like, obviously, but, you know, it. I don't know why I felt that pain. And it's, like, been with me throughout this day, too. So it's, like, I don't know. Maybe that's just a new thing that my body decided to throw at me. I mean, more chronic pain, the better, I say. <laughs> And yeah, if it's your first time here too, uh, I should probably explain by what I mean by more chronic pain, the better. I have like this weird wrist pain. It It's like very prevalent in my left one, but it's like also there in my right one. Where like if I do bicep curls, it just hurts. So I have to take like paracetamol before going into the gym just so I can like actually get like a nice bicep pump. Not even, like, get a nice bicep pump, but, like, so I can actually work my biceps. Which are, like, one of the main goals that I have right now for, like, this current split of my sort of training. I know, like, split of my train Training split, is that, like, the right term? Like, I, I could say mesocycle, which is basically, like, how long it takes for... To, like, actually make an impact on the muscle like how long it takes for the workouts to actually make an impact on the muscle but i feel like if i say mesocycle i just sound like a nerd or like you know like i just sound like a science-based lifter which i'm really not i have been trying to implement more like scientific principles in my workout but i mainly go in to have fun like, I go in because I enjoy lifting weights. It's just fun for me. So I don't usually try to overthink it. I just go in, push as hard as I can, and then leave feeling pretty happy. smokes down I might bring out a cookie for the rest of the video actually yeah, I'm, I'm definitely busting out a cookie to go with the coffee I don't know if that counted as ASMR for you guys but for me like one of my ears is just like very sensitive right now like, 
some days my I wake up and just like you get away from that. <laughs> some days I wake up and like one of my ears is just really like sensitive to noise. So right now like it's kind of both ears for me right now. So it is just like weird just how loud things are. I was walking up to the shop to, you know, get the coffee and the cookies. And just like the cars driving by were just thunderously loud. Like it was just insane. And the sound of the wind too. Like pretty much everything is just incredibly loud to me right now. Oh, that's a good looking cookie. Very big. Like that's bigger than... That's about as big as my face. I know how to feel about that. Hmm. Just gonna put it on the bag. I mean, it tastes nice, like it's a cookie. So obviously it's gonna taste nice. But, it also tastes very lifeless. Like it's that sort of, you know when you eat a cookie and you're just like, hmm. You know, like when it tastes like that, when it just tastes the way that just makes you like, oh, okay, you get me? Like it's not the, uh, usual very nice cookie like taste it's just uh, yeah it, it'll do sort of cookie that's how that tastes so you know like it like that's fine i i don't mind it but it it doesn't taste too good still gonna eat it obviously but yeah it's it's got a weird taste to it. So uh, that's my cookie review of the day. All right, that was a little bit better. Second bite was pretty good. I'm not actually just gonna sit down and eat a cookie and like review it, don't worry. <sighs> Coffee doesn't taste too good either, I won't lie, but you know, nothing much you can really do about it. We're making the best with what we got here, so you know, it, it is how it is. I could show you guys how I roll smokes, if you guys want to see that. I feel like I shouldn't be teaching, like, people how to roll smokes, but, you know, like, if if I don't, someone else is going to, so. You know, I, you know what? Might as well teach you. So first, you get your filter. These come with, uh... Usually they come with like roll your own tobacco and all that sort of stuff. So you get your filter. You get your pouch and you open it. Then you get your skins. Take one out. That skin pack is empty so you're going to need to get more skins. And then you take out a bit of tobacco. Usually I like to... Put in like a, like not too much tobacco. Like I prefer smokes that sort of burn quickly and don't really, like aren't really that pack, right? So about, uh, that's a little bit too little. about like that much tobacco 
like it isn't really that much that I have in there. A lot, like a very common mistake I see new rollers make is putting in way too much tobacco. It's better to put in less. Like put in just enough to sort of like, you know, like have it be around the same size as the filter. That's like a very good uh, rule of thumb, I feel, for rolling your own smokes. You want it to be like pretty much the same amount in there as the filter. Then you want to, you know, just spread it out, make sure it's even throughout the smoke. There we go. There's a little bit missing at the very end, but like honestly, when it's just a little bit less, it's fine. So once you have your tobacco in there, you want to grab it between your thumb and your index and then just sort of roll up and down like that. You want to put on, you want to apply like a little bit of pressure, but not too much. Because if you apply too much, then you're going to pack it down way too much. And it's going to be like very hard to get a nice pull out of it. This is probably one of the weirder things I've done in these coffee chats. I won't lie. If you're watching this far in, uh, comment nice stick. Uh, just as a reference to the one coffee chat where most of the comments were just nice stick. Oh yeah, in case you haven't seen that. In case you haven't seen the stick, actually. Here it is. Like, I still just have this in my room. I still just have the stick, like, lying next to me. And I just, like, every now and again. Like, it, it, it is a cool stick. Like, you can't deny that. Like, that's a pretty cool looking stick. But yeah, no, it, back, to the, back to the focus. Back to the main point. So you want to just, you know, roll it evenly throughout the whole smoke. There's an art to it, right? Like, a lot of people, when they first start rolling, they're going to be bad at this part. And that's fine. Like, don't stress it, just... If you're getting into, like, rolling your own smokes, if you're already a smoker, that is, like, do not, like, I'm not trying to endorse, like, smoking, roll your own cigarettes, right? I'm not trying to endorse that. I'm just trying to teach the people who may have already started smoking and are trying to get into, like, roll your own tobacco sort of stuff, right? And once you get... Oh, I'm going to put a little bit more in the end there. Because I thought it wasn't going to be a problem, but there's a lot of empty space there. So you want to roll it evenly throughout the whole thing. Uh, pro tip, if you angle your fingers like this, so that's coming in at the side, you can really get like a nice, even sort of flow to the whole smoke. And then, here's the hard part. This is the part where a lot of new sm new rollers really get lost. The tuck. Now, if you're new to rolling, what I recommend, right, is... Oh, it's going to be really weird to show. What I recommend is you bring it down like that. You want to pull it taut. And you want to leave like a little bit remaining on the part that you're, like, how would I even describe it, right? So, when you're rolling it, there's, like, these little cutouts. If you're getting, like, the amber leaf, right? There's, like, these little cutouts in the skin. You want the part with, like, the cuts in it to... That's gonna be, like, the side facing you, right? Well, that's going to be the side of the skin that's closest to you physically. You want to leave a little bit remaining. Like, you want to... When you're... This is going <laughs> to... I'm really bad at explaining stuff, so just stick with me here. When you get... When you're going to flick the skin, leave a little bit remaining 
on the cut side of the skin and then flip over that. It just makes it like a little bit easier to get like a nice like circular shape. And then once you have that done, you lick it and you stick it. And there you go, you got a rollie. Another like pro tip I would give for that is like, you want to really apply that extra pressure on the filter. When you're going for the flick, you want to make sure it's tight around the filter because that really like helps make the smoke a lot nicer. You gotta take another bite of the cookie. Alright, that was a really good bite. I don't know what it is, but following up like the taste of something sweet, like sweet, what the hell was that? Alright, <laughs> like following up the taste of something sweet with like the taste of something bitter like coffee. I don't know what it is, but it is a really nice combination of things. Like it's a really nice flavor in your mouth. find that these coffees get like a lot better at the end. And maybe that's just because of like me and how I prepare my coffees. Like usually, don't judge me for this, right? Like, oh, what I'm about to say is gonna spook anyone that is like even a remotely health conscious, health conscious, sorry. But I put like two sugars in my coffee. Ooh, scary, I know. So when I'm making like the coffee at like the, I don't even know what they are. Like, you know, those machines where like you poke at it and then like it makes the coffee. So when I'm making my coffee at those, I'll put in two sugars and then I'll stir it up. But usually the sugar doesn't stir evenly throughout the whole coffee. It doesn't disperse evenly. And it usually gets very focused at the end. And I don't really mind, I like the taste of unsweetened coffee, like a lot. It's just, I have a preference for sweetened coffee because, I know, like, I'm just a child, I suppose. <laughs> but, yeah, so, when I'm drinking, like, these sort of coffees, right, it's like, up until about this point, it's just unsweetened. And then, down here is like, sugar. It's, a, it's just sugar. So, usually I find the sweet spot is around, like, there, right? Like, right as it gets into the sweet zone, but it's still got that bitter taste, that's when it's, like, perfect for me. I think we may have killed the coffee. I'm gonna check. Oh, there's still some left in there. Alright, now we've killed it. Alright. That's all I have to say today. Thank you for watching. Keep running when no one else is.